You know, like when Sonic the Hedgehog gets hit, loads of rings come out. Maybe he could, <laughs> if he thought if he pushed him, some tickets would come Did out, he could use it. <laughs> Coin drop. Wow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Abroad Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad, and we're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? I don't like the way you really gripped your fist there, as you said, Pete Donaldson. Uh, Chris, I've just woken up from a dream. <laughs> it's very early in the morning here. It's a little bit later for, for you, obviously, Chris. And I've just woken up from a dream, and you were in my dream. Mm, really? Was so it a good stuff. dream? Um, well, functional, I'd say. <laughs> um, you, Conor um, Vier, who I've never actually met uh, in real life, oh, yeah. uh, and, and Pete, uh, Premier 2 Pete, um, we are um, in a room and you guys have a lamp that you need turning on and I had to rewire uh, a lamp for you guys and I felt like a real dad, <laughs> uh, you silly little boys, you did a lamp that you couldn't get working, uh, but don't worry. Pete fixed your lamp in the dream, so uh, you can wow. enjoy the, the the warm the warming light of a standard <laughs> um, just standard lamp, a literally a standard lamp. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, I'm proud of my performance. Interesting. Didn't even need any tools. I just think s- some of the wires had got frayed, but but don't worry, everyone. Uh, I fixed the uh, lamp for for Connor, Pete, and uh, Chris. Maybe it's fate. Maybe it's fate because mm. we actually went to uh, the video that's coming out Wacky Weekend this week. We went to a real con called like Lamp Real Con. So maybe. Oh. And I didn't tell you about that. I don't think. I so didn't know that. Know, but... That's amazing. I don't think yeah, you did. I mean, it would be a weird thing for you to say, Pete. We are going to a real con called the Lamp Real Con. <laughs> unless, unless this story, the, the, this real con had a great story behind it being called Lamp. I mean, that is proper. Some kind of like astral projecting. I don't really know how that's that works. Right. Kind of like it's, we are connected uh, over over an entire ocean of water. It's a real Car Young synchronicity right mm. there, right there. Very weird. I, um, Very weird. It's weird, isn't it? How dream dreams get like progressively shitter the older you get. I remember I had one the mm. other day, and it was just like shot in the dream. Shaw was like, "We're out of milk," and I was like, "Oh, I should probably go and get some milk." And I woke up, and I was like, "Oh, that was shit." Like God, it's like. <laughs> Dreams are supposed to be an escape from the mundane kind of reality. And they're just was this your cat's older. dream? I, I this sounds like a dream a cat would have. I want some milk. <laughs> this is what we drink. <laughs> it's just, my dreams are mundane. It's like, oh, I've got to do, oh. I've got to get some salmon. I've got to go and get some shopping. Like, my well, I, imagine living, I imagine living in Japan, because to get any money out of a bank, you got to go with your hanko and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, five hours of spare time. It's probably quite a lot of yes. admin uh, involved in living in life in Japan. It's not all bloody lamp rio cans and eating steak, is it? That it is not, Pete. That it is mm. not. But it's a good video, actually. I think I, I, did we, I swear we must have mentioned this place on the podcast. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I, we stayed at this. Um, if you did, where... I wouldn't have bloody remembered it. I almost guarantee yeah. that, mate. <laughs> From the man. <laughs> For the man, he started like three podcasts off talking about his glasses <laughs> being glare-proof. To the Correct. point, viewers were like, "Correct, not, not Pete talking about those fucking glasses." No, again. no, 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 no. They're only talking Shocking. about it because I started talking about it. I started, ah. to, I, I fronted up to me being very confused. <laughs> all right, <laughs> they're only talking about it because I was talking fair about enough, it. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'll let you <laughs> off. But right. uh, yeah, there's a cool video coming out this week, and we we stay at this real car, and there's no electricity, there's no Wi-Fi. And for someone like oh. Connor, who's like never had a dull, like never been a moment in his life where there's like no Wi-Fi or internet. Like right. you hang out with Connor, he is glued to his phone, and he's mm. like looking at a meme or looking at fucking some weird Candy he's Crush got, game or something. He's got, or something. He's got something. to stay on top of things. He's got to stay on top of things. He does because if you don't, the meme will devour you. Tis true. Tis true. You got to stay on top. And but it was quite fun watching him get like deprived. You can watch him in the video. We get on this bus and you sort of wait at the side of this road. And this bus turns up and drives you off to these mountains. And uh, on the bus, you can watch your bars of internet be like five, four, three, two, gone, <laughs> and then it's gone. And then you get to the well real done. car. And, and what, what I found was like there was there was moments at the real car where I was like, I was about to shoot something. I was like, I should probably Google that and fact check it. Pull out my mm. phone. It's like no, no, I can't. No, I've check got what to I'm work saying. on my memories and my knowledge, and that's all gone <laughs> because I've always got a computer in my pocket. Ah, we're stuffed. We're stuffed as a species, yeah. aren't we, without the internet? Um, <laughs> but it was really good, actually, and I hope the video captures it. I'm, I'm not editing mm. it. My amazing team of editors are working on it around the clock as we speak. Oh. But uh, it was really nice waking up in the morning, and there was like a little kerosene heater 
in the room, right, to keep you warm. Mm. And there's a candle above. And the candle gives you light. The kerosene gives you warmth. You're not allowed to switch off the candle, weirdly, because uh, they, there's like a weird lighting mechanism. So when you check in, they're like, whatever you do, don't switch off the lamp. It's like, what happens? Right. What happens if I switch off the lamp? Who, what creature will oh, come no. from the forest and devour me? It's like, no, nah, it's just effort. We just want to, don't want to put it on again. So you sleep with <laughs> this lamp it's, it's a, it's it's a, a real lamp. It's a real lamp. Well, it's kind of, a, an yeah, it's lamp. oil lamp. Oil lamp. Oil lamp, right, okay. Oil lamp. Uh. So you've got an oil tell lamp. Them, tell them that's not good enough. Kerosene heat. I could put it, put it in the reviews. <laughs> but it's not good enough. Like, it's like um, torture. <laughs> it's some kind of weird <laughs> outboarding torture t- situation. You would, I, I don't know if you would like this place. I know I certainly did. Because you're sitting there. It's, it's freezing, right? There's snow everywhere. It's freezing cold. And you get into your room. Mm. You've got this kerosene heater puffing away. And the room smells like a fucking oil factory in Qatar. It mm. smells really strong. You walk in, you get a headache. And after about an hour, your your body adapts to the smell of the kerosene, and the headache goes oil away. Now, <laughs> you're more you, you walk out more oil than man by the time you're done with right. this place. And like, yeah, so you, you fall asleep with this lamp on, this little like, flicker of this oil lamp. <laughs> I actually use my pants and put them over my face to block out the light. They're not oh. so good bit about that idea. Fantastic. And um, <laughs> and it's nice. Like I wake up in the morning and like I didn't. I couldn't like doom scroll and look at how rubbish the world is and how everyone hates mm. me for some mundane reason. It was nothing. I just looked out the window and went, yeah, this is quite good. This reminds me of a simpler mm. time. A time of windows and simplicity and just <laughs> and the, the mountain, the snow, the sound <laughs> of the stream. I, I loved it. And interestingly, the, the, the other guests there, we noticed the, the largest proportion of people there were actually single travellers, like men and women just right. travelling alone. And he went, we'd go into this like big dining room and there was candles all over the ceiling, as you'll see in the video. And it looked to be like the dining hall out of Harry Potter, the fucking Hogwarts like uh, dining hall. <laughs> and it's just all these people just sitting alone, like munching on a, on a fish. And they've got this big, would, like this, this fish would. on a stick. It's great. Fish you on, everyone, hang fish. on, you're just in a big dining hall and everyone's munching on a fish on a stick and everyone's just trying to get away from society and humanity. Um, it's a dream. I think... I think if the police raided that place, <laughs> I'm just saying that there'd be some good eating, all right? There's just a lot of people on the run, by the sounds of things, and you and Connor covered in oil, and you with your pants on your head. Reprobates, the lot of you. <laughs> I'm not selling it, am I? But no, maybe you're right, honestly. <laughs> if I wanted to escape from life for a bit, that is where I would go again. And I, and I sort of, I'm trying to fish stick. I, I don't think Con- Connor hated it. For th- several reasons. Number one, no internet, no Wi-Fi. The whole you time he was like, well, I have an important meeting at 10 o'clock. <laughs> of course. And, like, it, all, all day he was like, I've got an important meeting at 10 o'clock. We must leave the real con first bus that arrives. And then we got, off, we got on the bus. We went back to civilization. He looked at his phone. And he went, oh, the meeting's tomorrow. I made a mistake. Fucking annoying. Oh, man. Anyway. oh, no. He probably just wanted to get away from uh, you putting your pants on his head. He goes commando. He probably did. He has no pants I to didn't put, on put his head. my... I didn't put my pants on his head. That would prefer- Why not? <laughs> That's a very Share Pete Donaldson wealth. move. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, really, I came away thinking, like, this is this is the future. Like, no internet, mm. no Wi-Fi, go and actually break from civilization. I realised it was the first time in, I don't know, a decade without internet for longer than, say, 12 hours or so, right? Right. And, yeah, and for Connor, it was the same. So it's, mm. oh, it was really quite cool. And um, people will be like, well, you can do that any time. You can switch off your phone and sit in a room. Mm. But you can't really, because the electricity is always there. The internet's always there. There's always one bar there to connect to. To actually be forced away from that and have no choice but to experience no electricity and no, uh, and no uh, internet was, was really cool. Sounds like oh, I want to go to prison healthy. at this point. <laughs> Even prison there's <laughs> electricity. Think, there, yeah. And, and and the great thing about that is that you could do a delicious crime beforehand. So just enjoy enjoy a bit. And if it's really bad, solitary confinement. You got you got to do some <laughs> awful stuff to be in solitary confinement or something that practical. That is true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, <laughs> what I've noticed is the the incredible team who make the Abroad Japan podcast happen have forgot mm. to write a listener story in this week's episode. <laughs> have they? But I luckily, can see one. can you? I can what see the one. Fuck yeah. am I on then? Are you what? looking? <laughs> are you looking at the uh, running order of the twenty eighth of the? Uh, oh no! Wait. Yeah. Have I? Yeah. I think it's confusing because they've put oh, um, I looked at the wrong instead one. of using the, the instead of using um, the March uh, month, which is the one that we're in, they've uh, written it as February, and that's confused you, Chris. 
I've defamed my team. I can't believe I, yeah. I didn't believe in the team. I'm but sorry, they still team. got something slightly wrong, ever so slightly wrong. That's all. They did. They, they, they copied an old template. That's all. That's absolutely fine. They forgot Shocking. that it was that March into the February. <laughs> absolutely, I'm I'm infallible. I never make mistakes. It's not like you, you read them the before you even start the show, anyway. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Tis true. I, I I come into these right. We read out these stories. Guys are like, I I've never read them before. You can usually tell because I'm equally shocked and dismayed as we make our way through it. And this story... And sometimes it's not that you don't like the news story. It's very funny. It's true. It's true, because like, sometimes... I, I, to be fair, I, like... get two, I, I get two minutes before we start. Chris gets no minutes before he starts, because he's got a more complicated setup. I'm in my back bedroom. <laughs> I do. It's a nightmare. And I sort of come in and I read the story, and sometimes the story is like, there's no moral. And I like I need <laughs> narrative structure. If it's, <laughs> I need a narrative structure. And it's oh, like what I moral. went to Kyoto and looked at a temple. It was good, guys. Have a good one. Like, That's not a story. It's not uh, an anecdote. Let's hope sorry. Evan. And he's he's called himself Evan the idiot. Let's hope Evan has Evan. written a story with a narrative structure. And it begins. Mm. Hello, clattering Chris and pat pattering Pete. After watching Charlotte's video titled "If We Got Married in Japan." It reminded me of our wedding in Japan nearly 13 years ago. Uh, my wife, a lot of people didn't read the title on that. They were like, I thought this was a marriage video, but it wasn't. It's like, you got the word if. It's if. The word if. Yeah. yeah. Like she when Audrey smart. Simpson said, if I killed her. Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's the same. It's the same. Uh, the power of if. My wife, a Japanese yeah. citizen and I, a Canadian citizen, were married in a beautiful Shinto shrine just beside the Odawara Castle at the tail end of cherry blossom season. Bloody hell, that's amazing. While preparing for the wedding, we had a choice of wearing suits or kimonos, and of course, we opted for kimonos. The ceremony was beautiful and went off without a hitch as we said our vows in front of the Kami shrine. After the ceremony, we were brought to a dining room where speeches were given and my wife and I were to crack the top of a sake drum, an act that's supposed to bring good luck for the marriage i'd done that one time uh in at the start of new year the school it was so much fun the principal mm. made me and some new teachers like stand around a drum of sake right and you get a hammer right and you smash yeah. it in and it was a bit awkward because i it was like it's new sand bang and the fucking yeah. sake sprayed all over the principal and i was like oh was that so that's supposed to happen he was a very stern mm. looking man do, and he didn't do, um... seem too pleased <laughs> Do, uh, <laughs> did, did, uh, is that acceptable in a school to be spraying, um, booze around like it's the Formula One? <laughs> well, it's their tradition, it's their culture, isn't it? I, I just right. turned up and get the hammer out and fucking go to town right. with a box cool. of well, it's it's Pretty it's... much what's happening with Evan here, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I, maybe I hit the, I hit the sake barrel too hard. And, yeah. Because the other colleagues were like, tap, tap, tap. And I was like, fuck it. I'll tell you, I'll show you the yeah. power of Britain. And anyway. The Pasaki went everywhere. Be careful when smacking the, the, the barrel. Alas, Evan <laughs> continues. After the ceremony, uh, we, we hit the drum, and we, pro we provided a small wooden mallet and a visual demonstration of what to do, which was lucky, as I was nowhere near fluent and was struggling to understand what was going on. It became my mission to break that drum, and so with a count, I forced both our hands and the mallet down as hard as I could towards the lid and crack... Oh, crack it did. As the lid snapped and plunged into the sake drum, a large splash of sake erupted up, upwards into the air. Mission complete. Getting some real flashbacks here from this story. <laughs> I was feeling ecstatic until I looked over at my wife's face. Her look, oh God, of shock, quickly transformed into one of humour, puzzled me. And it wasn't until some hours later that I found out that the lid had been pre-cracked and we were only supposed to give it a light tap. Yes, that's the same mistake <laughs> yes. I made. What could have been a forgettable moment was captured by our wedding photographer, forever encapsulating my Guy Cockerjim mistake. That's a great title for a book, isn't it? My Guy Cockerjim mistake. <laughs> the, whole, <laughs> the whole experience was just amazing. It was a memory that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Well, hitting a thing with a hammer. I <laughs> highly recommend the experience to anyone in a similar position. Uh, love the podcast, guys. Wishing you all the best. Has, it, has anything ever happened like this with your partners? Evan, the idiot. That's a good story. That I mean, was good. That's it a was good a good one. story. There you go. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, because you hadn't heard it before... You you did the exact same thing that Evan did, <laughs> which is quite nice. Um, I would say that, uh, I mean, you both sound like fucking Shrek, by the way. Yeah. It's the sort of thing Shrek, Shrek would do. Western, oh, I hit free with hammer. Boom. <laughs> oh, no, too hard. <laughs> oh, very proud of you two. Very, very proud of you two. Cracking foreigners, stuff. Literally. Foreigners rise literally up. Literally cracking stuff, yeah. Mm. I, think, I think as a foreigner in Japan, you feel like, 
you know, you often have to rise to the challenge and show how brilliant you are. And like, yeah. you'll have like men just Get be excited. like, arm wrestles, that's near. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, masculinity, uh. And then they'll be like, drink it, that's near. And you have to like drink them and then fucking right. hit things with hammers. Like, you have to like prove yourself and show. Right. Have you seen the, the TV show, uh, Shogun me. recently? He's had to do that in Shogun as well, the guy in there. Right. What uh, does he have to do? You've got to prove in, yourself. In, in 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 uh, old school times, show to, like show his yeah no but like in in this in this TV show presumably he has to I don't know wave a sword around or something. No, he has to drink uh, some lord some swordsman under a table, and then he the the guy who's going to become like the shogun. Um, mm-hmm. He's like, let us jump off this boat and have a swimming contest, and the guy's like, all right, and so this Japanese like future shogun him dive off the boat and like swimming and <laughs> everything is like a competition and. Uh, yeah, you'll experience that too if you visit Japan. But this ceremony is called uh, Kagami Biraki, and Kagami means like mirror, and I think it's like breaking the mirror, right? It's a symbolic thing, right. breaking the mirror. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I really cool memory actually. I often think of that because it was so surreal. This just being like hoisted up in front of a crowd of teachers at this like uh, event in it was December. I think it was January. Sorry, I think it was January, and it was like the opening of the year party. And just in front of a hundred people, just being like, "Oh, fucking show you!" Ah, like it's just, it's just what it's just weird, but a beautiful <laughs> aspect of the culture, a beautiful yeah. part of Japanese culture. <laughs> but what isn't beautiful? I and mean, we've talked about foreigners doing things in Japan this week. Mm. Uh, one foreign passenger uh, did something naughty on a train, and this is just off the back of me making a video last week called "Foreigners, Foreign Tourists Versus." Uh, Japan, right? A worsening situation. Mm. Um, talking about how foreign tourists have done some some shit things in Japan, like touch yeah, kimonos and geisha, harass people in Kyoto, trash temples mm. and scratch their name, Julian, into a fucking 1,200-year-old building. Um, and this is another story. And it, it's sort of a sad one, right? Um, but I'll let you take over, Pete. What's going on on the Thunderbird train, which sounds a lot cooler than it is? <laughs> well, it sounds like very much like somebody's um, Kagami Baraki, uh, uh, a train conductor, Chris, to be honest. Um, uh, West Japan Railway and its passengers were preparing to bid a bittersweet goodbye to the full service of the Thunderbird Special Express, which I think is a lovely name for a, for a train, uh, which has connected Osaka with Kanazawa since 1964. There's now loads of different ways to get over there uh, and, and much quicker at that. And so this was the last day, uh, the last day of the full-length Thunderbird route was March the 15th, but the day before, loads of fans were riding the train because they wanted one last... Because, you, know, you know, Japanese uh, uh, people love their trains. They love it. I've done. Love it. I know as well. Um, so the day before, um, loads, of, um, loads of train enthusiasts were on there enjoying the final full-length Thunderbird route. Um... But in the middle of this um, of this journey on the 14th, um, fans experienced the trend's PA system crackling into life. Uh, the police are investigating an incident that has occurred on board, delaying the service. Um, a foreign passenger, apparently, was asleep, and when the conductors came by, they asked to see his... Tokyan, Tokyukan, or Special Express ticket. Um, the passenger, a Caucasian male, didn't have one and instead became agitated and shoved the conductor. Um, oh following God. the ruckus, the train made a 40-minute stop at Tsur- Tsur- Tsuruga uh, Station, uh, where more police were waiting. Um, there's a lot of like uh, foreigners in Japan who sort of go, oh, the, the people are picking on me because I'm um, foreign. Uh, but, yeah, I yeah. mean, he pushed a conductor for crying out loud. Apparently, um, passengers, uh, when they're travelling on this uh, train, they must pay for two kinds of tickets. They've got one ticket, which covers the base fare from one place to another. But then you've got another one, uh, the Tokyukin, uh, covers the additional surcharge required to ride faster long-distance express tra- trains, such as the Thunderbird or the Shinkansen. Um, and... There's also the possibility, uh, the, the the piece writes, that he knew what he was doing and was just pretending to be asleep, which we've all done at times. Oh, I've just woken mm. up. I'm so, I'm so tired. I don't need to get involved with the world. Uh, but uh, and and you think um, that the the guy, the guy should just uh, pay for his ticket, um, but instead he got up and and got a bit physical with the uh, train conductor. So um, yeah. he'll probably face charge. He'll face something, but uh, it's just a bit sad that all of the um, train enthusiasts. Um, ex- who were waiting to experience the um, the their favourite train one last time? Um, it's sad, isn't deal it? With delays. It's like having the last flight of Concorde and then being physically all sick all over the pilot. It sort of overshadows. What, what you do in the uh, cockpit, mind you, the nineties. 
It was the nineties. <laughs> it was uh, well, mm. no, Concorde's last flight was in two thousand three, but yeah. uh, the nineties. Alas, hey. oh right, so alas, right. yeah, fair. the uh, yeah, the Tokyo Ken thing. They, they they check your train ticket on a lot of local trains in Japan, right? It's not. Mm. You didn't go, white man. He must be. He must be lying. He hasn't bought a ticket. He just goes from person to person and checks. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't know why he shoved him there. That's just really twatty mm. behaviour. Like, well, fuck mm. it, I'll show you. Wow. It's kind of like Maybe he thought just a bit very much twatty. like, you know, like when Sonic the Hedgehog gets hit, loads of rings come out. Maybe he could, if he thought <laughs> if he pushed him, some ticket would come out, he could use it. <laughs> Coin drop. <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a shame, though, because then, like, on the, I think I saw this on the Japanese um, media in the news, whatever, it was like, you know, there's, there's these, like, jubilant crowds waving goodbye to the Thunderbird train. It's like, mm. everybody was so happy to see the Thunderbird train roar off down the railway line. But then, a man f who wasn't Japanese shoved the train conductor on his last journey. Yeah. And, it, yeah, it's kind of like, oh, for fuck's sake, why would you do yeah. that, you dickhead? Well, we, why? Yeah. You wouldn't do that normally anywhere. Why would you shove the train no. conductor? Honestly. Don't shove the train conductor, dickish. for crying out loud. Dickish behaviour. Um, but, like, you know... Of course, I, I've spent a lot of time calling out foreign tourists and foreigners doing shit things in Japan. But make no mistake, the Japanese media does latch onto it um, in a way that mm, we don't stop. in the West. Obviously, we in the West, we love talking about migrants and stuff like that, foreign migrants mm. and all that sort of stuff and in an awful way. Hell, that's covered. But we don't really cover foreign tourists doing bad things. Here in Japan, they mm -hmm. love it. They latch onto it. I, it kind yeah. of, it's kind of like good viewing figures, right, to talk about stuff like that. Um, nevertheless, absolute dickhead. What was he thinking? I don't... There's there's no fine to be had here, really. Just a slap on the wrist and maybe thrown in a fucking river. I don't know. That's my justice. <laughs> Throw him in a river. Vigilante <laughs> justice, yeah. <laughs> I think the, the crowds train. waiting at the other end of the Thunderbird line should have been able to grab him and just toss him into the Saruga River or something, mm. which is a river I may or may not have made up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's that as well. I don't know. I don't know why they got rid of the Thunderbird train. I think it's because they've just opened up the Shinkansen, Shinkansen line. Sorry, um, from Tokyo to Fukui, which is kind of right. cool. They're always expanding, ever expanding the bullet train. Mm. I love it. Don't know what this was, but uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> HS2. To be Come honest, on HS2, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, don't get me started on that. Um, but yeah, the Japanese rail operators, they run a tight ship, and um, it's mm. hard to get away with doing stuff like this, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, don't don't shove the train conductor. A bit of advice mm. there. If you're tripped to Japan, that hopefully do that. You, you, you won't do, because like, unlike this guy, you're not a dickhead. Uh, back in just a moment, guys. Your stories, comments, and questions over in the fax machine. Wow. Now we're back with the fax machine. I have to say, one thing I didn't point out a minute ago with the Thunderbird story, I, as somebody who loves the Thunderbirds, the TV series mm. from the 60s, the Thunderbird train has no affiliation with the Thunderbirds. Very few Thunderbirds. You don't That's know who's driving it. Parker could be driving it. <laughs> imagine if it was like... Like the thing tunes, you rock it down fucking Ibaraki or wherever it is. Uh, I mean, like, out, just sort of like da, 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 then I just make the little um, the little MIDI file play like a different tune <laughs> de, 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 when the doors de, de, open. De, de, yeah, de, 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 de. that's it. Yeah, missed opportunity, Perfect. missed opportunity. Yeah. Bring Agreed. back the Thunderbird train, reinstate it, <laughs> put that song on. But we've got a story or a question from Derek. Over to you, Mr. Donaldson. What's going on? Oh, in the fax machine? Derek. Derek from Arizona. Dear Chris, beat my question is for Pete. Yes, finally, a question for me. Uh, we've seen Chris decorate all manner of vehicles on his various uh, journey across Japan, from bikes to vans, using only items from Daiso or other similar types of shops. I mean, decorating, uh, Derek, I have to say, is, 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 is a loose definition of what Chris is doing. I mean, he's, he is um, <laughs> transforming. It's like Pimp My Ride with, uh, with that bloke. It's just kind of um, creating these um, automotive and bicyclic... Uh, creations. Um, basically, sticking an N64 controller on on, on some, uh, is, on some handlebars. Uh, the next time Chris, the next time Chris visits England, would you allow Chris to decorate your import uh, the yes. way he does in his videos? I'm sure it would be a blast for everyone. Love and melon pan. Derek from Arizona. Uh, I've recently imported a car from Japan, and it's still just sitting on somebody's drive because the DVL. Oh, no. I'd like you to decorate my car with some registration plates, if you would, Chris, because the DVL <laughs> so far have been unable to do so. They they took three weeks. Oh. To no. tell me, they took three weeks to send me a letter with all of my application materials sent back to me, saying you haven't given us enough um, money for the no. first year of the tax. So just give me six months tax. 
I don't care. I just need it on the road. So, yeah, it just, I just... They're not in my oh, good book. Pete. This is just extending and extending and extending. I have to ask, having um, fought a lengthy battle to get this vehicle, do you, or have you at any point, regretted doing this? Because I know I said... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, time, <laughs> times are tight. Times are tight after a tax bill, and you, 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 you know, you think about the things you spent your money on, and yeah, that's definitely, definitely in there. In the, in the old tax nugget. deductible. Can you charge uh, the car? The well, and put your logo talk about on it enough on this, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Turn it into a. <laughs> if I sort of put some put some microphones in, the amount of times I mentioned it on every podcast I'm on because it is a a real albatross around the old neck. Is it an albatross around your neck, or does the albatross yeah. just buzz around your head? Bothering you, I don't know. yeah. Albatross on the neck. <sighs> yes, like my dad. I am. Um, real shame. I, I have to see the car at some point this year when I'm back. I'd love to see it, touch <laughs> it, and destroy it. Mooching around. Uh, we've got a story. Got question cruising. from Dylan, uh, who says, "Hello, Chris. Pete. Chris, I remember you liked the Nakagin capsule tower. Did they ever do anything with the capsules that you know of? Any other particular cool buildings to shout out for us? Thanks for making the podcast so enjo- uh, enjoyable to listen to, Dylan from Takoma." Um, Takoma It's in Arizona Is that a Takoma? Yeah Takuma? Well you kind of said it like a Japanese name place And I very much enjoyed it Takoma Instead of Indeed did, did, I did um, Nakagin Capsule Tower Special place in my heart My favourite building in Japan It was the building that had like 250 capsules People used to live in mm. them Call them home It's a washing machine And then well, Yeah they look like washing machines And mm. meets sort of like uh, Jenga and it, it was really cool. I love that building. And i very sad. I was in Shimbashi just yesterday, actually, where it is. And I looked up and it wasn't there. It's just, just, I, I, I can't remember if they built a new building there now, like a generic apartment block. It's a very lucrative piece of land. So I'm not surprised they got rid of it. Um, mm. But uh, I think they've taken a few capsules and a few museums have them. So you right. can still see the capsules in different museums. Um, but uh, it's very. Yeah. Um, they were very like sort of like um, what did what did Starfield call their tech like sort of NASA futurist kind of kind of they look really kind of nineteen sixties nineteen seventies kind of mm. future sci fi kind of uh, capsule they were they were they were, they were uh, incredible but I imagine uh, full of asbestos <laughs> yes yes just like the Nakagin yeah. capsule tower was mm. I think uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with I'm obsessed with uh, obsessed with asbestos Pete. I'm obsessed with asbestos. It's a fascinating, uh, d- destructive uh, stuff. Um, there's, there's a Reddit page where basically, um, if you think you've got asbestos, uh, actually, there's two that I very much enjoy: the asbestos uh, Reddit page and also the "Is this a hidden camera?" Um, uh, page. Um, oh my god! It was people um, finding things in their walls, or just like just looking at a wall and going, "Has this got asbestos in it?" And then going on the Reddit page, taking a picture of their own wall, going, I think this might have asbestos in it. There's no indication there's any asbestos in it. It's just a fucking wall. And they go, and it's, just, it's not crumbling. It doesn't look like there's fibres in there. It's, it's just a wall. It's just a wall, mate. Don't worry about it. Um, but all of these uh, asbestos experts are going, right, okay, what, can you scrape a bit? The, you know, can, you, can you see into the wall? I mean, we, we just can't tell from this from this vantage point on the internet and there's also other people as well who um put their um pictures of when they're in hotel rooms and airbnbs and stuff things they Mm. think are cameras looking at them and they are never cameras (laughs) they're always just like um automated air fresheners in toilets they're always uh just um motion uh detecting devices and stuff everyone thinks they're under under surveillance (laughs) even more than they actually are Kinky, kinky stuff. Bloody hell, bloody hell, man. You, I'm going <laughs> to buy you some asbestos for your birthday so you can Good. put it all over your car Chomp and roll it. around in it all fucking afternoon yeah. like a sheep. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I must say, though, very, very sad the Nakian building's got. I've got into some debate with some people on Twitter about it, and only, only in the YouTube comments, they were like, it's a hideous building, it's ugly, I hate it. It's like, you might not like it, but you've got to admit it's pretty cool and unique and. It's Once it's gone, else, as it, it is, it's, mm. well, no, it's gone. There's just going to be another generic apartment block building that looks the yeah. same as anything else, right? Yeah. I'm all for, like, uh, renovation, it's reconstruction. <laughs> and, it's probably going to be a 7-Eleven and a fucking karaoke booth or a hotel. It's going to yeah. be rubbish, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm always sad to see historic architecture go, you know. The the, the movement was a big deal in the, in the early 70s. Um, it's called, like, the met- metabol... Uh, what was it? Metab... Oh, fuck, what was it called? The metabolic Meta- Metabolic. Metabolic architecture. I can't remember. 
Uh, but there was a, you know, it was a big part of, and the guy that built it, um, Kishore Kurokawa, he, he was the one that came up with capsule hotels, actually. The first capsule right. hotel in Osaka. So, you know, and his legacy's his gone. <laughs> At the same time, when he was building it, he was like, it'd be amazing. You can pick up your capsule and go whenever you want. Well, that didn't quite happen. Because removing <laughs> one capsule would bring the whole building down. So he, mm. he, he didn't think too far ahead, old Kushal Kurokawa. But, uh, and, and I can see why they got rid of it, given it was an absolute state. But I wish somebody a little bit earlier down the line, like 20, 30 years ago, had sort of looked at it mm. and gone, if we don't fix it up now, it's fucked. And they didn't, and it's gone. And I'm very sad about that. So let's, mm. let's take care of our old buildings. Uh, in terms of buildings to check out, my, uh, there's a Buddha I visited with Pete Premier 2 in Hokkaido in Sapporo. I think it's called the Hill of the Buddha. And it's a Buddha in what looks like a missile silo. And it's in the video, like the road trip we did across um, Hokkaido. And there's just this Buddha in this like concrete underground silo. And it's the most incredible thing. Um, also, the uh, Umeda Sky Building in Osaka is pretty epic as well. You know, both pretty futuristic -y, post modern looking buildings. We've got a question here mm. from. Uh, last question from Will from Wisconsin, who says, Hello, Chris Pete. In 2024, I set out to learn Japanese with the aid of my local university night course. We use the Genki books, and it's been quite a challenge. As we move from basic statements to forming basic sentences, I'm finding it overwhelming at times. My question for you both is, how did you go about learning Japanese, and how do you keep motivated when it seems too much? Looking for uh, some advice. Uh, all the best, guys. Will from Wisconsin. Well, Pete. As somebody who's fluent at Japanese, how have you done? How do you stay motivated? Share your secrets uh, with us. Chigai mas. Chigai mas. Nihongo vengishimas muzakashi des. It is difficult, isn't ones. it? Like, trans like transferring from, uh, uh, like, remembering a bit of vocab, which I think is the most important thing about learning a language, surely. Like, if you can just get the major words in your noggin, then people kind of understand you. I, 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 you can just point at stuff and go, this is difficult, this is hot, <laughs> this is cold. Like, that's mainly... Yeah, British yeah. people, all we, all we do is drink tea and point at the weather and go, hot, cold, can't it's wait true. for it to be hot again, can't wait for it to be cold again. Just learn those sentences. But it is just <laughs> like word orders and markers and counting oh. words and stuff like that. Uh, difficult and, and knowing um, which order in which to, to, to place words and stuff. And, and that's not something that I've ever uh, nailed, so, sadly. Uh, but um, I would say, um, remember I was talking about that game? And again, not affiliated with it. Um, I've not mm. been paid. I've not, uh, yeah, I must admit, yeah, um, Ryan did send me a code for it, um, but um, which I've not used yet because I'm actually trying. I've just not had time. Uh, Shishingo, the, uh, the, the Learn Shishingo. Japanese with Photography video game, I think, uh, is coming out on the Switch later on. Uh, it's not the Japanese soon, version of Susudie by Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah. Shishingo. <laughs> Shishingo. Um, so I think Shishin uh, is a uh, picture, isn't it? And uh, yes. lingo or... I don't know, Go I don't means know, like Hongo. word. Oh, yeah, yeah you mentioned yeah. this. This was quite a cool idea. It's just, well, it's just I, like I a sort of little watch. kind of like Yakuza side game writ large, um, sort of going around town photographing things and learning the vocabulary and, and words and f mm. thought different bits. And I've, again, I've still not played it, but um, Ryan very kindly uh, sent me a code, which I will be doing on a flight to WrestleMania very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, it, um, it, it got reviewed really, really well. But like uh, all kind of indie developments, it, it's really fucking hard because I think he's, um, I think Ryan's all, all, all by himself doing it. Uh, so. Hopefully more to come from him, but uh, yeah, pick th pick that up if you can. It's good, just good for little vocabulary bits, as, as I've seen on the um, videos and stuff. Great. I think. Well, I think like motivation. I'll, I'll be bl like mm. when I was at university, I tried to do some Japanese courses. I failed. I like, bombed because I'm sort of like the person who's like, I'll do it on the night. I'll, I'll do it in the moment in the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to get excited about something when there's no tangible benefit there and then to learning it right which is a pretty and also sport. classroom kind of also also yeah, like classroom oh, dynamic especially classroom. if there's people who if if there's people who in, in a room was better than me at something i just don't want to fucking do it <laughs> and with language learning and a lot of stuff in life i don't want to do it because everyone's good and they've worked harder and they remember stuff quicker and people learn yes. it different ways isn't it and I, I remember in that class there was about i think about 15 people and they watched like one piece and i was like i don't know what one piece is and they all knew certain words, like how to say pirate in Japanese, and they all had one level above me. And I, I but again, I, I had no motivation until I got to Japan. Then I was extremely yeah. motivated. 
and I, I went really hard on studying more than anything I've ever done in my life. That first year in particular, I was like head down in the room and you, you just didn't see me outside of work. I'd be in my room studying like a maniac. And I'd say to you, Will, uh, you know, come to Japan, try and set like the date in your book, something that you go to Japan, maybe two weeks, three weeks, and that'll be your guiding star, right? It's something to get fired up about. Like, I'm going to Japan mm. in December. I want to mm. be conversationally fluent by then. And if you complete yeah. Genki 1 and 2, you can, you can be conversationally fluent. You get by in pretty much any situation. Um, and, yeah, you need something like that to, to get you excited about it, really. Or maybe watching Japanese TV or films as well, having the subtitles on to learn. But, yeah, really, for me... I'd love to learn Spanish again. I learned it at school. I was pretty shit, but I love learning it. And I, I think if I was going to learn it, I would need to be like, right, I'm going to spend three months in Spain next year, and I'm going to start studying now. And only then would I be fired up and motivated to learn, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, something you can't really force upon yourself, unfortunately. But I will say, after the first three to six months of studying Japanese, it does start to get a lot easier if you put in the effort outside the classroom hours, which you're going to have to if you want to show some real progress. But I've got a fair few videos on learning Japanese. Check them out on the Abroad in Japan YouTube channel, which is quite good. But for now, guys, keep the stories, questions, comments coming in to Abroad in Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll see you right back here, guys. So do it all over again later in the week. But for now, have yourself a great few days and uh, study some Japanese. Study hard and don't push any train conductors. But for now, bye, everyone. Have yourself a bloody good week. Take care. Hi, I'm Alex. That's gone on.